All right, so this is the little dump interview. Um, there's some twists, to say the least, in this interview. And I'm even heard remarking during the interview, this thing is not gonna come out. Well, he hit me up multiple times to make it clear that he did want it to come out. So uh, I just wanted to throw that in there and say that my better judgment made me feel like probably shouldn't release this. But apparently to him, it's uh, an important document of what he was going through at this moment. So here it is, without further introduction, the Lil Dump interview. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today, Lil we, Dump. we having a sit down with Lil Dump. Yeah. How you feeling, man? I'm feeling good. It's good to be here with you today. What brings you to LA? Man, I was really in LA, came with my boy, chill my boy Kevin, ended up doing me versus 20 females. Oh shit, how did that go? It was pretty cool. It's like you're nobody if you don't have a verse 20 females at this point. Everybody's doing it. It's taking over the world. Yeah, I ain't really like planning on doing it though, but it was cool to me. You mean a nice looking females as a result? Yeah, I mean nice looking ones. Yeah. Anybody that caught your eye? Yeah, African. A few of them? No, it's just one African. I just chilled with just one African out of, out of the whole bunch. Damn, so you were vibing with the African girl? Yeah, but she got aggravated. <laughs> really? Yeah. Why, she was standing on business a little too much? Weird. She was just weird? You can tell a weird person from a, a genuine person. Mm -hmm. Like a genuine, like, like why, like genuine people? Don't do too much. Mm -hmm. A person like you can tell a person they just want want to be around you for one reason. Uh, just she was a cloud chaser. Type type. Yeah. They didn't try to like fake anything with the twenty versus one. Like they weren't trying to like set up some viral moments because I've noticed I've seen some shit that didn't really seem real to me in a few of these things. Uh, no. Like, the females wise, they just came on some, like, some extra shit. You know how females be on, like, sometimes drunk girls. Mm -hmm. Or just just weird period uh, on some other shit. What kind of girls do you fuck with? Like, cool, like, cool, you know, good vibe. I'm just wondering if, could, do you think you could date, like, a regular girl, or are you only going to be able to date girls from where you're from? I can date a regular girl. I feel like there's something that the girls where you're from, uh, I don't know. I just feel like that you seem like you're so from the the soil there that I just have a hard time picturing you with a regular ass chick. I'm glad you said that. I like regular, I like regular females though. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I can vibe with all type of vibes, but I like I like regular people though. I like regular females. Mm -hmm. Not everybody, you know, the same. A lot, a lot of different. So, girl from the trenches of Baton Rouge versus white chick who went to Harvard. I'd take the white chick that went to Harvard. She could teach you something. Thanks. Probably less backdoor possibilities as well. Mm -hmm. See, that's a different situation right there. <laughs> I don't want to stereotype the chicks where you're from, but I don't know. A lot of times when I'm talking to dudes that are from the projects or whatever, they'll talk about the chicks where they're from. Like, they don't trust them. Yeah, I think about it. Sometimes a lot of people come from small areas of where they're from. Mm -hmm. Uh, got certain situations that they going through or uh, problems or, uh, you know? Mm-hmm. These days, not everybody trusts trustworthy. It's hard to, you know, see through things. For sure. So what was uh your upbringing like in Baton Rouge? You know, you got, you got a car before you walk. Definitely got to learn to crawl before you walk. Like growing up, you know, it's about where we from. 
everybody want rank. Everybody want, you know, they want to be somebody. Mm. They want to picture life different at, and not for what it really is. You feel what I'm saying? So even when you were a kid, you felt like you were not in a really, power struggle? People, Not really too, too many childhood moments. Really? So you felt like you didn't really have much of a childhood? Yeah. You were just kind of thrown into what? Like from an early age? Just the chaos of the streets around you? It's the chaos. So you saw a lot of shit going on from a very young age? Growing up, yeah. Anything in particular stand out? Well, that's a first. So what just happened? Hmm? What just happened? For Something deep in life that, you know. I'd rather not talk about it, but. Do you think I, I can talk to you about it personally as a person, you know what I'm saying? But some, you know, things deep in life. But I'm just talking about you puking or, like, the fact that you're kind of drunk, right? No, I ain't drunk. I'm sober. You're sober? No alcohol. That's not what's in that cup. I just kind of assumed it was alcohol. Water. Oh, okay. So what are you going through right now? Just some, some, some deep things. You trying to get clean? Hmm? You're trying to get clean? Get clean. Off of some other shit? Yeah, type shit. At the same time, but... What is it, perks? Mm. If I'm trying to get clean, I mean, nothing. Right. Not at the moment, nothing. So what do you think made you puke? I talked to you about it. But not the camera? Not the camera. Okay. You can just tell me right now. We'll edit it out if you want. You ever like... Well, okay, like normally... Let's say you were hanging out with a girl. And then she pukes. I feel like you can't really like her after she pukes. It's just like... Because you don't really know if she's there or not. Even if she's acting normal, you don't really know, like, is she fucked up? Because I've had this situation where a girl puked and then she's still trying to fuck. And I'm like, I can't really tell if you're, like, coherent or not. So I think I'm going to say no. I just don't want to be doing, like, a podcast that's not, like, consensual because the version of you that I'm talking to maybe is not capable of consenting. Nah, I'm me. Okay. I'm me. 100%. And just certain things that I'd rather talk to. Uh, you seem like a genuine person. Certain things I'd rather talk to. Talk, I talk to you with a room, a room full of people, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or uh, being in front of four cameras. I mean, yeah, so we could just talk about whatever you're going through with the puking or whatever later, I guess, and just talk about other stuff now. Yeah. Okay. I want to ask you a question. Here we go. Let's do it. Do you believe in demons? Demons? Ugh. Nah. <laughs> Why not? I'm not religious. I know, but you should know that demons are real. In what way? Because i never seen one. Never seen a photo of one. Never heard of one? I mean... An actual demon? I'm picturing like a little fucking monster guy. A little monster guy. What's it like? Like a spirit? You can say that. No. I mean, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in the devil. So I don't know where the demons would come in. I met a lot of rappers slash like rap affiliated people who seem like they got some, they got some demon in them. Actually, maybe I should be thinking about that with you. Hmm? Do you consider yourself a demon? Nah. I'm a regular person. 
are you a regular person despite some of the demonic that you might have done? Can I get a, a different definition of what you're telling me? Demonic. Just, you know, some evil that the average person wouldn't necessarily... I mean, you grew up in a crazy-ass place. I'm not asking you to get specific, obviously, but, you know, sometimes extreme situations call for extreme measures. Yeah, you right about that, huh? Mm. So where were we? We were talking about your childhood, what it was like growing up in Baton Rouge. Yeah, my bad for going off the subject. No, that's cool. Oh, do you have any other questions for me before we keep moving along? What was your childhood like? Very normal suburban house, maybe two, three bedrooms. My parents worked hard, but didn't make a ton of money, but we did all right. And then uh, they saved a lot of money for college, and which... My sister took him up on that. Myself, not as much. I only went for like a year. I went for two years, actually, but yeah, it was all right. Like, like from from there on to now, like, is there anything you miss? That I miss? I mean, I miss a lot of things. A lot of girls that I wish didn't have me blocked on Instagram. I kind of miss them. Uh... Times when I had more freedom, more of an ability to, you know, kind of just do what I wanted day in, day out. I don't really feel like I have that as much anymore. I got to grind now. Mm. Um, so, okay, what kind of kid would you, like, by the time you get to, like, elementary school, and shit, you describe your personality? Mine? Yeah. I'm just... Bad as a motherfucker. Really? Not my fault. You know what I'm saying? What do you think made you that way? Yeah, I think about it. Growing up, my mama got a lot of kids. You feel know what I'm saying? How many? Um, all the girls, she got seven kids. Seven kids? Yeah. Yeah, it ain't not really a lot compared to because I got another. A lot of people in this world got more kids than that, but it's not, to me, it's a lot of kids. You know what I'm saying? To me, that's a lot of kids. Yeah. And I'm the oldest brother. Mm -hmm. I got an older sister, but I got more kids than my, my daddy's side, too. But, but I'm the oldest brother. I think about my daddy 10 years. My real father did 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, no father figure. You're going to grow up thinking that, you know, you got to teach yourself. So Big Dump was gone like your whole childhood? That's my, that's my uncle. Oh, that's your uncle, not your dad, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you never really had a relationship with your biological dad? Even to this day? You haven't really tapped in with him? Yeah, I talked to him, but nothing to talk about with him. He just doesn't have anything to offer? It's not about what you got to offer, you know? It's about the simple things. Time, you know, conversation wise, you know, conversation period, none of that. Do you resent him for not being around and making life hard on your mom? No. See, I try to make life better than what it is, you know, try to do the best I can in life. Try to change things that probably won't be changed, that can't be changed, you feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, try to make some out of life from what it, what it is and what it ain't. <clears throat> For sure. Um, when did you decide that you wanted to get into the music thing? or When did that become part of your mission? I always wanted to do music, like, like, growing up, I liked the instruments and, you know, I liked it. all type of drums and all this other shit. But when Big Dumb died, 
you know, he always wanted me to do music. I used to write on back and putting papers and shit like that. Uh-huh. But he, when he died, I started doing it, taking it serious. So you're how old when he passed away? I was like four years ago. And you're how old right now? 21. About to be 22 and 15 days. And he had been working with Youngboy for a long time. So was he bringing you around consistently when shit was going on and stuff? I was around before this time, too. But oh, before Big Dumb started working with Youngboy, you were already kind of around him? Yeah, Kendall, but no, I'd rather not talk too much about him. Like, he did so much for me. He, like, uh, no, don't get me wrong. A lot of people might look at what I'm going to tell you crazy. Like, it's like a father figure to me. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Fact. Because he's just not that much older than you? He was like a real father figure. My daddy went to jail. He did a lot of for me. How'd you meet him? At a young age, huh? How'd you meet YB? Where I'm from, small as a motherfucker. Mm-hmm. You know, think about it. You know, grew up in the street environment, like in the environment of, of the streets. Mm-hmm. So, grew up and just had, you know, the connection. Definitely. I mean, he really got popping in, like, 2017, 2018. I don't know. He's probably popping on, like, a underground level for a few years before that. But um, when you started going around, uh, what level was he at? And, like, how did, how, what, did that kind of show you that there was life outside of maybe the street you've been doing? By seeing the success that he was having? Mm-hmm. When you saw a young boy having all the success, did that kind of open your mind to what was possible and that you didn't necessarily have to just be concerned about a bunch of stuff streetwise? Nah. You know, everybody got their own problems. Everybody got their own life to live, you know? So I look at it like, you know, I look up to him, but... You know, I love him. I look up to him, but I can't let what he do, you know, be all on what I do because I be cut up doing some of the same things he doing. I be too much just like him. Mm. And that's what a lot of people got f- up these days. You feel what I'm saying? A lot of people want to be like a person. A lot of people want to the person doing because they see that person doing it because they've been around that person for so long or they just too to that person. You know what I'm saying? You got to think about it. Nowadays, you, you listen to a lot of people from Baton Rouge and mm-hmm. they sound just like one or two or three, three people that made it from Baton Rouge. Mm-hmm. And not too many people made it from Baton Rouge because, you know what I'm saying? Well, it's not easy when, like, arguably the most influential rapper, street rapper at least, is from that city. It's going to be hard for anybody in that city to, like, make it without being influenced by him, right? You can say that, but anything is possible. Definitely. But so I, I guess what I was trying to ask before, though, is, like, from seeing his success, did that like really motivate you to want to do your thing musically and start making legal money and whatnot? Now nah, you tied me a lot. What I learned is not about what you know, it's about who you know. That's what I learned. One of the things he taught me. That's real. So did you bring Big Dump around? Or, like, how did that relationship start? No. Big Dump was always around. Yeah, think about it. I'm 20. I'm 21 now. Throughout the time, I was still a child. You know what I'm saying? They look at me like a child. But, you know, I grew up around a number of older folks. Not too much of a childhood memory. Mm-hmm. So uh, when 
big dump got killed, how did that change your life? It faked in my life. I don't think it changed my life. I think it faked, like, faked in my life, a big part of my life. What's the difference to you? It didn't really change anything? Like, you know, as a person go, like, progress, see things that they always wanted to see in life, have things that they always wanted to have, that you, th you think they wanted to be happy with it, right? Hmm. You feel me? Right. So, yeah, I mean, like, this was like a person that was really important to you, and then they end up, despite all the success that people in this camp were seeing, he ends up losing his life. I mean, I'm not sure exactly what your narrative is on this, but a lot of YouTube videos out there putting it out, basically making it about some street shit that extended from some rap shit. Did that kind of change how you thought about the whole rap thing when you see all this bullshit that could happen behind it? You know, I like I like music, period. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm But as it becomes to the, the rap shit, I mean, it's back and forth, this, that, and other. I look at it like it's pussy. Really? To be fair, young boy is a very consistent purveyor of the going back and forth in music. Definitely not afraid of making you a diss song. You ain't that shit. Huh? You can't talk that shit. If you ain't bought that shit, you can't talk that shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Listen to the words. Let's look at this shit these niggas do these days. And look what we do. Look how we live. Look how we talk. You know what I'm saying? This ain't about lit top. You feel me? This ain't about no other nigga. It's about lit dump right now. Mm. So, has talking shit or, you know, speaking to people that you don't get along with, has that always been something that was on your mind when it came time to make music? The thing about me, I get a, a, a thrill out, out of, you know, making an example out of shit. You know what I'm saying? It's a thrill. Instead of me, adding extra words to your words. I'm going to set an example. I get a thrill out of that. You know what I'm saying? So you're saying as opposed to rapping, doing some real shit is more what you get a thrill out of? Yeah. But what if that's not really an option? What if you're rapping about it's somebody who's... It's an option if you... Uh, over words. I'd rather choose an option over words. <laughs> But don't you feel like when it comes to hip hop beef or whatever, that it would be better if it played out on songs as opposed to Not in the if streets? You kill it. Huh? Not if you're killing it. What do you mean killing it? Killer beef? Not if you're killing it. Right, when it's beef that's that serious? Kill a beef, man. You feel me? Basically, like, you know? You don't get what I'm saying? No, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of hip hop beef that's serious enough that I ain't saying like kill nobody, like kill a beef, like you get what I'm saying? Killer beef. Like, what's the point of going back and forth? Like, kill this. Right. So you're not into that shit anymore. Of kind of going back and forth in songs. You left that behind. I'm into right now, I'm into making more money than what I've usually been seeing over the you know, past year. Mm -hmm. I'm not into going back and forth for nobody. Right. It's not a lot of money in it, huh? What? 
the beef shit. A lot of people have been talking about that lately, how Drill is dead. No, he's not. Not at all. So you're leaving that behind? You're trying to make more classic music? If I'm trying to make music for everybody. Mm-hmm. Not just Baton Rouge. Not just New Orleans. Not just, you know, the South. But it has been pretty crazy that the music, like the most hardcore street music from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, whatever, is fucking some of the most popular music in rap, right? You can say that. But you'd rather go in more of a mainstream direction or something more general? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, boy. I mean, what am I doing? (laughs) Am I really supposed to keep doing this? I don't know. I mean, it's going to puke multiple times. I don't know. Fuck, dude.